Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Intermedia Unite Contact Center webinar today. Um, we're just going to give it another minute or two to let a few more people join, and we'll get going. Thanks again for joining. We'll see you in just a second. All right, welcome everybody. Um, first of all, I just want to do a quick check. Everybody hear me okay? Can you hit one of your emojis up on the screen? Any emoji would be great. Great, thank you so much. Well, my name is Jason Shepard. I'm a product marketing manager with Intermedia, and I'd like to welcome you to our very first um, Unite Contact Center webinar. Uh, we're all super excited today because um, we're able to introduce you to a few of the people from the contact center, the new contact center side of our business. And I'd like to go ahead and get some of those leaders started right away who are going to be uh, presenting to you today. Um, the first one is going to be Reza Cameron. He's the senior director of product marketing and my boss. And the second presenter will be Joe Herde. He's the director of marketing. He comes over from the Cloud Contact Center side. And um, again, I know that both these guys are super, super excited to be presenting to you today. Um, the second thing I want to let you know is please just let us know how you're feeling about any part of the presentation. Um, we love the feedback. You go up and just hit one of the emojis up there, a thumbs up, thumbs down. Give us a little uh, like, or I guess a sad, if you are just not feeling top of your game today. Um, any of that would be great um, during the presentation. If you have any questions, um, at the end of the presentation, uh, we're going to try and keep it short today. But um, if you have any questions at all, we're going to answer those questions all the way up until the end of the presentation. As much time as we have, we'll answer all of your questions. Do that by hitting the little question uh, box in the middle, and uh, we'll do our very best to get to your question and get it answered. The other thing is um, you can either join by, uh, if you want to listen to this over the phone rather than listen to it over your computer speakers, uh, please do that. You can go ahead and hit that button over to the right uh, to do it that way. So without further ado, I'd like to switch it over to Reza Cameron, who will get started on the uh, presentation today. So take it away, Reza. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jason. Thank you, everyone, for joining today. For those on the West Coast, good morning. For those on the East Coast, good afternoon. For anywhere else in the world, I'm going to let you deal with your own time zone. But welcome and happy to have you here today. Um, Jason, can we move to the next slide? No, I can actually move it. Never mind. So. For this, I, just to be clear, uh, this particular webinar that we're covering is going to be actually a two-part series. Our first part is an introduction to contact center. So we wanted to make sure that our partners 
are fully aware of the opportunity that exists from a contact center perspective. And today we're going to cover off uh, a, a number of areas and topics. We're going to talk about, you know, the market dynamics, the market opportunity exists there from a contact center perspective, really giving, you know, our partners uh, an idea of really what we're talking about when we talk about cloud contact center, what does this really mean? And, and how is Intermedia approaching this uh, from a market perspective and how do we make it different? From that, we wanna be able to provide you with an understanding of how contact center services can be positioned to your customers. And obviously this is something that we will provide you with, but you know, I think there's an opportunity also to have some level of engagement uh, related to this to make sure that, that, that you have everything you need. And then we wanna give you a, a sneak preview uh, of the intermediate contact center solutions itself that we're gonna be coming up with. The part two, which we'll talk about later, is gonna be coming at the end of October. I will talk a little bit more about that at the end of the presentation, but that will be a much more detailed view into, into the actual contact center solution. But we certainly, at this point, wanted to give you an introduction of what to expect. So let's let's just start. I wanted to talk a little bit about the landscape of what's happening right now from, from, from an industry perspective, from a market perspective. And this particular slide was interesting. We pulled this from a PwC report. And interestingly enough, uh, one of the things that, that was pulled from this, and this is a survey that was done among small and medium-sized businesses today um, that have been saying that essentially 73%, 73% of consumers point to a point to customer experience as an essential factor in purchasing decisions. I mean, that's a huge number if you look at this. Now, interestingly enough, of, of the survey that was done, and again, this was smoke, focused on small and medium-sized businesses and, and their customers that they support, is that customers were also saying that they're willing to try additional services or products from those brands that actually do provide them with superior experience. Now, there were three things that were indicated about this, three things to take into consideration to sort of help small businesses really enhance the experience. And one of those was, one moving beyond you know the usual demographic data secondary data that may exist there and trying to understand the customer's real needs so what you know what what customer challenges can the small can a small business customer solve that may not necessarily need can be done at a larger business level how intimate and integrated can that discussion be you know and uh, interestingly jeff bezo had had provided a quote um, earlier on as, as, you know, as part of Amazon's um, view of the world right now, which they've done a fantastic job in being able to provide that exceptional customer service, which says, you know, start with the customer and work backwards. So build value from that answer and work backwards. So that was number one. You know, the second thing was ensuring that you keep your employees happy. So engaged employees are really the backbone of excellent customer experience. The third one um, that was brought up was being proactive in asking customer feedback. Now, it's amazing to see this, but, you know, I've run into this in the past as well of how many organizations don't actually engage in proper feedback, you know, making sure you're understanding. And I think, to be honest, this is probably the single greatest advantage that a small business can actually deliver to their customers. Not only are you, you know, moving beyond the demographics and employee and, and understanding employee happens, but you know, if you're able to understand that feedback, because customers at the end of the day, they want to be heard by the companies that they're working with right now. So being able to hear that feedback and then incorporating that with the insight and data collection that you've got, I mean, that's a winning solution um, all day long. Now, I think it, what's important to remember that, you know, these, these elements really represent sort of the core aspect of, you know, what's intended to be delivered from a contact center solution. But I will indicate this to you, is that typically contact center solutions that we've seen in the marketplace have been built for enterprise. Enterprises with big budgets. And so, you know, not necessarily something that's been geared towards small and medium-sized businesses. Now, does that mean that small and medium-sized businesses don't need these types of products? Absolutely not. What it means is that, um, rather than focusing on big business, complex features and high pricing, the intention here is to really build the gap to address small business needs with capabilities that are important to them, right? And understand their challenges within a small business environment. So budget constraints, you know, simpler implementation and deployment needs, um, simpler core features, and finally, flexibility depending on small business needs. This is what we've been seeing from a gap perspective in the marketplace 
and you know what we're we're hoping to to talk to you about to address how we're going about it. So here's another interesting dynamic that we found. This was a survey that was conducted by Bain and Company um, a couple of years back, talking about the changing market landscape of the customer experience. And so this interview was, these interviews were done, I think it was about, again, around the same, about five to 600 companies. And uh, the thought process in behind this was, you know, we know that we need to compete based on customer experience. And 89% of these companies had said, I plan to compete on customer experience. I'm going to make customer experience a transformational exercise within my organization. And in that same interview, and it was business owners and CEOs that they had met with, 80%, 80% of them believed that they actually are delivering a, a superior customer experience. In the same survey, they interviewed the customers. Less than 8% of those customers actually agreed. That is a huge problem. And it's a it's a problem that will go unnoticed unless unless that, that that there is some awareness that's there or there's some tools actually in place in order to evaluate that. So the reality is that 82% of their customers will stop doing business with a company after a bad experience. So let's look at this, right? I mean, the factors that that play into this are obviously, you know, not only the support capabilities and tools that would be available by contact center, but you got to look at the dynamics of, of these different generations that happen here. You know, the baby boomers, for example, that have been predominantly voiced, you know, moving into millennials, that it's based on information sources that I want to communicate with me. Don't communicate with how you want to communicate with me. I want to communicate with you the way I want to right? The Me Too generation to Generation Z, um, which is the next generation. I mean, my kids, which to be honest, are like born into the internet and they have no patience or time to deal with even one bad experience. So what you're seeing right now is the need an optimal experience is going to be based on flexibility. It's flexibility of your system and, and how you can deliver this superior experience based on the vastness of this customer base. And by the way, this is coming. Like this is not a choice. At the end of the day, this is going to happen. And either you get on the bandwagon or you don't get on the bandwagon. I think that's the critical thing to happen. This is not a choice anymore. So ha having said that, I, I also wanted to give you some views on on you know the changing you know dynamics that we're seeing right now from from a technology uh, from a technology perspective or a technology purchasing perspective from an IT side. So the reality is is that you know partners that have sold UCAS in the past have have understood that the economic buyer traditionally for phone systems has always been you know the IT IT person. However, if we look at this, I mean, the reality is this is not IT 2000 anymore, right? This is IT 2020. And there is a different landscape than there was before. So, you know, similar uh, to UCAS, it's been, um, you know, purchasing decisions that have been happening in the early 2000s. IT typically had control or was the sole decision maker of a lot of these activities. So it was an on-prem world. You know, they, IT was the economic buyer. Solutions were very hardware driven, you know. Uh, there was a heavy reliance on deployment uh, capabilities. Now, if we start looking at, at the dynamics of what's happening is that organizations are looking towards IT, but at a transformational level. So it's not just about infrastructure and security. Yes, those are all important things for a business. Absolutely. But how can I relate the infrastructure and technology to the top line business goals of my organization? And then rather than being the economic buyer they once were, where it sold decisions. And I remember having this discussion with my IT person a few, you know, a few years back, Blackberries were in. And I told my, I remember having this discussion with the IT person and he goes, um, I said, look, we have these Blackboards. I'm not a big fan of, fan of Blackboard. Why can't we do, you know, your bring your own device? You know, I think that's, it's important and you know, it gives us flexibility. And he said, well, that's just not the way things work. And I said, well, you know, happy employees, you know, and he says, well, listen, this is the way IT does it. If you don't like it, go find another job. Uh, like it was literally that black and white. I mean, today it's all about experience right now. It's all about flexibility. So that economic buyer has now in terms of IT has become the economic influencer. So you, you can't just make decisions just based on infrastructure anymore. You've got to understand what that experience is. And that experience is going to come from different people within the organizations. It's not on-prem anymore, it's moving to cloud. They know they have to move to cloud. It's not, it's not CapEx budgets anymore, it's OpEx budgets. So there's this reduced reliance from an IT perspective. They still know it's important, we still need IT, but the different landscapes of how we use IT are, are, are an issue. So if we believe that IT is still the entry point or the gate 
gatekeeper to how we sell, then there's a different conversation that needs to have here, right? It's no longer, it's, it's, it's a change buyer behavior. You know, how they purchase will change. And, and then if, if how they're purchasing or making assistance is, is changing right now, then how we sell it also needs to change at the end of the day. So what's the core issue? I mean, from an IT perspective, the core issue is this, in my personal view, is that they're viewed from an organization as a cost center. But what IT really wants is they want to be an innovation center. You know, they want to be part of these transformational business goals. And in order to do that, they need to understand, you know, the flexibilities within cloud. So I still want the flexibility of cloud, but I still want some aspect of control. So how do I figure out, for example, how do I move away from point solutions to an integrated set of solutions across the organization? You know, how do I ensure that, that, that whatever I deploy from a cloud perspective is easy to manage and easy to scale? You know, um, how do I drive out low value IT functions? So in other words, you know, I know I need to get into transformational changes within the organization, but I'm stuck doing patches, patchwork, and I'm doing this with less resources because, you know, the CEO is saying, look, you got to do more with less. We, we, we're, we're outsourcing whatever we can. So they're expected to do more with less, but they're still, they still want to be able to drive awareness. So in order to do that, I need to drive out these low value functions. They still want to maintain control. So I still want robust infrastructure. I still want reliability. I still want control. I still want tools that I can use. But how do I showcase tools in a cloud environment to help it, right? And then flexibility of the system that says, I need a system that's capable enough to be able to provide the basic foundations of what's needed from an IT perspective. But remember, we talked about the different departments and different experiences. And that's what I mean by flexibility is that it should be it should be structurally capable of supporting IT's needs, but at the same time provide the flexibility from a department perspective, perspective to provide the user experiences that are really going to make the difference at the end of the day. So let's take it. Let's take this as, as another step under under that we talked about the IT issue. So if we understand contact center solutions, which I believe to be a subset of the organization. Um, and from a contact center perspective, this is also changing at the end of the day. Now, under this assumption right now, contact center providers are also viewed as a cost center, but you know they wanna move to a revenue generating center. So how do I basically move from just taking calls to driving and upselling capabilities? In order to do that, you know, the capabilities on the right really talk to what I need to look at. You know, I want omni-channel experience to be able to work with employees and customers, whatever communication channels they need. I need flexibility of a service. So remember we talked about flexibility of the system? This is saying at a service level, I need flexibility to be able to work within my department to based on the different user requirements, type of agent, type of seat, bursting, mix and matching, you know, time to resolution, right? Reducing churn, you know, easy access to subject matter experts, not just within the contact center, but outside of the contact sector. And then real-time data. I cannot stress this enough, real-time data in terms of actual customer data, tagging and flagging, efficiency of agents, you know, whether it be a local contact center or global, wherever those, wherever those contact center users are and how they're engaging with, the, with their customers, how do we ensure that we have the right data at the right time, the right dashboards that are managed in order to create the flexibility environment. So the connected experience that we talk about, it, it's beyond just a point solution, right? This is, this is a much broader set of capabilities that we're talking about, but certainly the dynamics of contact center and what's needed within the organization as a subset are still there. It's still the same thing. So the thing that I wanted, I wanted to really harness here is that, look, at the end of the day, the cloud contact center market is a huge market right now. Back in 2018, not like it back, it was not, not that long ago, last year, I should say, uh, you know, the, it was estimated at about $9, $9 billion in 2018 and expected to reach nearly $33 billion by 2014 with, you know, a compounding annual growth rate of nearly 25%. So there is a big, big market opportunity that exists right now. And, and I think, you know, our intention is really to showcase to you, you know, what that opportunity is and how we can sort of help you drive this to the next level. So I wanted to, before I pass this off to Joe, I actually wanted to keep this a little interactive. So I, what I, we have a survey question that, and this is a live survey question that we wanted to propose to our partners, you know, that what percentage of your existing customers have, you know, have some form of contact center solution. So I'm actually going to post this survey right now for you. 
And I'd love to get your feedback on this. And then, you know, I, and then we can review the results uh, in, in about a minute or so once everybody's had a chance to do it. So I'm just going to play this right now. And please, if you can, just fill out this information and uh, we'll share it and get, get some opinions from everybody. So we'll just give it a minute or so. Or so. We'll give it another 30 seconds as these adjust. Okay. Um, so that's that's an interesting dynamic. So Joe, being the context center expert that, that you are and coming from this world, what, what are your thoughts on, on some of this information? Well, you know, the, the results is they're actually what I expected them to be. <clears throat> As I saw the uh, the bars moving in real time here, and, and, and very cool by the way, I I really enjoy this uh, this real time survey here. But uh, yeah, the results are exactly what I what I expected them to be. Um, there are a lot of companies out there, um, especially in the SMB space, that either have not made the leap yet, or they're using their existing um, PBX hosted PBX or UC system for some semblance of very uh, loosely defined or high level um, what they would consider to be contact center type things. Like for example, they would be using like an auto attendant where they should be using a, an IVR, for example. There, there's a lot of different things that some of these small companies would do not knowing what capabilities they have if they were to choose mm -hmm. a solution like this and also not knowing how affordable it is. Yeah. Um, so is, is the model in your mind then it, this, this could be uh, a, a situation where they just don't know what else is out there in order to to provide that exceptional experience. They don't know what's out there, and they're also that 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 lack of knowledge also extends to not knowing how aff affordable a solution like that could be, because um, some of these small business owners uh, they may they may have been around long enough, or they may know people that have been around back in the day when contact center systems were large cabinets and racks in a in a silver room. So they may be thinking, well, I don't have the space for something like that. I don't have the budget for something like that. I don't have an IT guy to run something like that. All these concerns a small business owner would have uh, are not, not knowing that this is available in the cloud, turnkey, um, with training, would be they'd be able to use it, no problem. Uh, and they could build processes. We would help them build processes around it. And like you said earlier, turn it into a transformative experience. Right. Right. Well, interesting. Well, listen, we, we appreciate uh, the input and the information here. So I'm now going to pass this off to Joe, who's going to talk uh, more about our the context center market, the solutions and stuff. So, Joe, uh, I'm just going to hand this off to you now. Yep. No problem, man. And make sure I got the controls here. And I do. All righty. So I did want to start by clarifying a couple of things that are that are usually mentioned in the same sentence and usually used interchangeably as well. So. I want to clarify this from a couple of perspectives. One, I want to explain what the difference is. And I also want to explain from the perspective of what we sell and what we don't sell. So a call center, you know, we've all heard about these things before. We've called into them. We've been called by them. Uh, it's teams of actual warm bodies that are calling. They might be operating as a help desk. They may be operating as a telemarketing um, center. And... Um, and, and you know that is a that is a type of service that uh, a business process outsourcing um, firm would run would offer a BPO outfit. Um, so that is not what we offer. But it's important to know that those call centers run on contact center software like what we offer. So what's contact center software? What what does this thing do? Everyone everybody's talking about customer experience and transforming that. And you you saw some of the stats from Reza before of how serious things are in terms of leveraging that as a differentiator, this software uh, is what could enable that whole transformation. And it basically, it, 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 if, if we look at that little graphic there, it allows for interaction with customers on a number of channels. We call that omni-channel communication. It's, they can communicate with, with a company via email, phone, web, social media, chat, mobile, 
Um, and then the, on the agent side, the software uh, affords tremendous flexibility in terms of the agents being able to be located in a room like they usually are or remote. They could be working from home. They could even be outsourced like a part-time spillover um, agent model. Uh, and all of this flexibility is afforded by how the software is, it, 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 just the nature of it being cloud-based. And then you, you, you then then you wrap in things like the integration side of things. Now you're probably wondering, well, what, what does CRM integration have to do with this? So um, the more integrated that a software platform like this can be with a platform that companies are using to run their sales operations, or even in in different uh, sectors like healthcare, for example, they have their own versions of CRMs. Like for example, there's a there's one called Cerner, which is an ele electronic health records platform that type of platform needs to be integrated with a, with a contact center as well, because of course the whole nature of the business is being able to, to do scheduling and outreach and handle inbound calls and all these different types of things. So being able to integrate with these different uh, mainstream CRMs is, is very key. Uh, and then of course, on the management application side, all of this, all of this is wrapped together nicely in terms of reporting, we, we go very, very deep on reports. The, 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 you know, uh, Reza was talking about the, avail the availability of real-time reporting. That's a key feature here. It allows you to know exactly what's going on, drill deep into customer queries, all that type of stuff. We also, also offer um, quality management supervisor tools to help agents become better agents. So there's a whole bunch of things wrapped up in what contact center software does. And of course, a lot of this is kind of skewed to what our own does. Um, and then just to close the loop on what cloud contact center uh, is. So we talked about what contact center is. Now we're gonna just close the loop on what cloud contact center is. And I want to draw a parallel with, uh, with phone systems. Um, a lot of you, of course, would be uh, you know, very familiar with the space. Same for me, I'm an old telco head here, spent almost two decades in, on telecom side. And you would be familiar with, uh, well, this is actually a very elegant photo of a PBX system, but I've, I've seen some that, that, that look like cabinets and take up large rooms. Um, but the same way that PBX systems have made the leap into the cloud and not only in not only retained all the features and functionality, but gained a tremendous amount is the same way that contact centers have made that leap as well. And I did wanna zone in on some of the, um, some of the, the not, I don't wanna read everything word for word, but I just wanna zone in on the hidden cost um, conversation here. We've done some research, and we, we weren't the first ones to do this. You know, there have been other folks that have gone gone this route. But there's a there's a misconception out there that hardware is always cheaper. Hey, if I buy this, it belongs to me. I don't have to pay for it every month. But there's actually a total cost of ownership uh, increase with hardware as opposed to software, and that's because of some hidden costs, and I've listed some of those there. IT support and admin, there's full-time resources that you have to pay for. There's hardware depreciation power and space requirements. So in some cases, a significant amount of space and a lot of power and cabling, so not forget structured cabling. Um, and then the downtime that's, that happens during fixes. Um, we have a white paper on this that we can make available uh, at any time that will really drill this home. Uh, and the reason why we, we, we go that, that deep on that is because a lot of people still have hardware-based um, contact centers, the same way a lot of people still have hardware-based uh, PBX systems. You go into any uh, big ticket retail store. I mean, just like last week, I was in Best Buy, and I'm seeing Nortel gear on 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 desks and stuff. I was like, what? So it, it's out there, and and not only small companies are using it, big companies are using it as well. So this is just to close the loop on explaining that all the features that I talked about just now is is transferred into uh i'm seeing some notes popping up there about security we'll get we're going to get to all these questions after we got we got answers for all those things um we're, we're, we are compliant and, and and all that you know right down the line so you know, no, no no concerns no worries there but we'll get to that we move on from here so reza talked about the, the contacts of the market now this the 33 billion number is representing the north american market space just north america that's not even a global figure. And this is what the market is, in, is, is forecasted to be in 2024. Um, but you know, you're probably thinking, okay, good, great. I've seen all, you know, all these markets are big, right? What does that mean for me? Well, it means that we're gonna be helping you get into that rapidly growing market. Um, we found another stat that was pretty interesting. Over 60% of global companies use cloud contact centers. 
and you and you heard earlier from resident um, in 2018, um, the the figure the forecast figure was what is it, nine billion, and, and so this is some rapid growth that we're talking about here. So the, the trend is real, and trend is here to stay. Uh, we talked about cloud, you know, how all these technologies have moved to the cloud. Cloud adoption is proven. Uh, and all the concerns and, and, and who, the person that raised that question about security is absolutely right. This is what this is what prevented cloud adoption from taking from going faster when it was first introduced. But you know, all these things have been addressed uh, in time and, and, and so have we. Um, this is a very sticky product. This is a stickier product than a lot of other cloud products because this is something that companies use at the very core of their business. And when and when it works. And when their agents like it, they're not going to rip and replace this. It's, it's gonna, you're going to be fighting tooth and nail to do this. I've seen this happen a lot of times. It, some people get so stuck on using some of these older systems. I'm going to give you a perfect example. So we um, we we onboarded a, a, a pretty large. Um, it's an ILEC, but it's a it, it's a, a pretty large partner in 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 Canada, and they had some older school customers on an older school um, solution. And, you know, they were stuck in, in you know, oh, we like to do things this way. You know, we like these types of reports, but we like the stuff that you have. So we're going to migrate, and we, you know, and they migrated. Uh, and then we went through the process of custom developing reports that matched their old reports because they were so used to operating in that way. But it's just, just an example of how we can flex with whatever is needed. They still needed to migrate because their, their existing system did not do a host of things that they needed to have done. But... In, in migrating, they lost absolutely nothing, and but they, but 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 at the same time gained a whole bunch. So that you know, so it, it, sometimes people get very attached, but we know we have ways of we have ways of of, of opening those conversations and steering into specific pain points per vertical and all that. Revenue multiplier effects. So you guys are all selling other other solutions. Um, there are ways to to upsell. You know, when you get into the space. Because this is a solution that has multi-vertical um, opportunities attached to it, this can help you get into verticals that you may not necessarily already be in. And then when you get in there with contact center, then you can start upselling your other services. And the final point I wanted to close off on, and this by no means is, is, is the least of importance, is the turnkey sales and operational enablement available from us. Now, Rez is going to close off on that in, in a final slide where he gets into all the, the whole, everything that, that's involved with partner enablement. But on the sales enablement side, what I didn't want to mention is that we, we go very deep in terms of campaigns, collateral, uh, and, and we're doing this from a, from a position of, of, of significant expertise. You know, this, this team is, is immersed in this, not only this product, but this space. We also understand the target markets. We understand all the verticals. So when you get collateral from us, this is not, you know, what what I joke around internally and, and refer to as fluff stuff. There's no fluff. It's all hardcore relevant substance. So who needs and uses contact center to, to be to be super um, generic? Any company that needs to interact with its customers. Period. Literally. And I just mentioned some verticals here, and there's some segment examples in here. But what I want to just give an example of outside of this is that there are a lot of companies that think they don't need it just because they're too small. You're going to find some folks on the SMB side that are like, hey, man, I'm just running a, 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 a garage here. I'm just fixing cars for a living. And then you start asking someone like that question. It's like, okay, well, how, how, how do people get in touch with you? Or if you, if, if you, if you, really, uh, if you really want to be a, a, a smarty pants, you could go look up the company name on Google. And, and invariably, there's, there's going to be a Google review star right next to the company's name. And if you're lucky, it's going to be a lowish one. And if you're even luckier, some of the reviews are going to talk about stuff like, I can't reach this guy, or the, uh, the, 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 or if they have one, um, the agent didn't give me very good service. They didn't know what the hell they were talking about, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then you start talking about things like, hey, did you know that uh, you could reach out to some of these folks to let them know, um, hey, I have a special this month, you know, um, it, just before winter season, I'm going to be doing 50% off on, on, on snow tire changes or you know, fixing transmissions or whatever. You're living in an area where there's a lot of, a lot of you know, potholes in the road like where I am right now because my whole neighborhood is under development. Hey, special on suspension, fix the suspension because we know you're driving through a lot of holes every day. So all these different things, it might sound a little comical here, but these are all possible with, with our software because we have outreach capabilities with our dynamic notification feature. All these different things you could bring into these conversation spaces when you're talking to people who don't think they need this. 
much less for these verticals that we, that we, that we mentioned here. So how to position contacts and services to your customers? Now, this is just a bit of a, 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 a little teaser here. But we, you know, when we have our next, um, when we have our next session, we're going to drill very deep into this. So just to start off, this, and this is just a, a, a bit of a follow up to what Reza mentioned earlier in, in the fact that, you know, we're living in an age right now where people have a lot less tolerance for, um, for what you know, bad customer service. This is going to help uh, ensure that you have a platform to address that. We're living in an age right now where you can buy the same thing from any number of different people. And one of the few ways to differentiate is through uh, a, a positive customer experience. So this, this, this platform enables that. This, this software enables that. Finding your audience is key. Rez was talking about the IT folks earlier. Uh, the, so the best thing is to find out how do you, how do you identify the right person to, 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 talk, to have this conversation with? So you try to you ask yourself, who is the person that's staying up at night worrying about these customer service issues? And that title could change based on the company and whoever is responsible for customer care or customer service, that's the person you want to target, right? Um, that's where you go and you start identifying what we call the business user. And that business user has the pain, they have a need to fix it. And in most cases, they're going to have the budget to fix it because this is coming out of the OPEX budget, not CAPEX budget like it used to on the IT side. So the, the whole thing is about finding out who your audience is and positioning this to that person. And finally, um, a lot of prospects may already have some form of a solution already. The conversation doesn't end there. In fact, it, 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 there, are way, there are ways to, that, that actually triggers off additional conversations because you, you could find someone who may have an older school hardware-based system or an older school cloud-based system. It may not be delivering the types of reports that they need. They may still be having issues. They may have processes that need to be fixed with the software and so forth. So when you find out that someone already has uh, one of these solutions, that's not the end of the road. That's, that's actually uh, triggering off an opportunity for a bit of a, a discovery phase. And there's a lot more that we can cover on the positioning side. Uh, but we're going to save that for the next webinar. So you're probably wondering, well, okay, terrific. This sounds wonderful. How much money am, am I going to make with this? So, and you trust, you could trust our math here. We, you, you, you're free, we are free to, to schedule a follow-up call and we could walk you through how we came up with this. But partners can achieve an incremental 125K in profit in about a year. And before I walk through the figures, I'll just give a real, a real world example. We have uh, a one partner in particular, uh, they're, they're a, a Microsoft Gold partner in, in Canada. And um, they started to see their Microsoft channels, you know, dry up. So they thought, you know, we got to diversify our revenue somehow. So they, do, they diversified with us. And we, we, put, we turned on the marketing engine. Uh, and we did all, you know, everything from, from uh, inside sales campaigns email campaigns, webinars, on-site training, um, road shows, all that type of stuff. And, and within about a year and a half or so, well, you know, because they were also juggling a Microsoft portfolio, they are up to about 75K uh, in monthly recurring revenue right now. But in this, in this little example here, we're saying that if you sell 50 new contact center proceeds per month, every month for 12 months, that's 600 seats at $85 each, at fifty-one thousand dollars in MRR, and at thirty-eight percent margin, at zero churn, you're looking at about one hundred twenty-five grand in annual gross margin. Now, the margins are volume based. We'll get into we'll get into a lot more details in terms of the, the tears and stuff. But this is just to give you a, a, a little a highlight of what the financial opportunity looks like. And just a quick uh, example success case. This one happens to be on the education side. This particular university, and I won't go through all this, but I just want to highlight that we were we off we were able to help them pull off a 50k cut in IT training costs, we're, it, and then another uh, 10k in savings by by helping them avoid purchasing new handsets, and then another 10k savings by integrating with their existing um, solution, their existing phone systems. So we're vendor agnostic. We, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what we what we deploy on top of. So. Here's, this is the star of the show here, pretty much. This is, this is the, the three packages that we're, we're going to have available at the end of October. Contact Center Express is, is aimed at small businesses looking to build or improve their sales or support practice and don't want an overkill type of solution. Some of the, some of the features are right there, inbound voice queues, 
supervisor functions, et cetera, call recording. This, by the way, is already fully integrated with Intermedia Unite. It's only available with an Intermedia Unite plan, but it's, uh, the, the integration is, is, is completely seamless. The other two here, Contact Center Pro and Contact Center Elite, these will have the same type of integration uh, as of probably early next year, early to mid next, which is on the roadmap for, for, for 2020. But these are for more, like for example, Contact Center Pro are for businesses looking to handle customer interactions via multiple channels and need deeper insights from those interactions and also need greater control over call routing and IVRs, et cetera. Uh, and then Contact Center Elite is the Rolls Royce of the, of, 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 the, of, the, of the tiers. You know, this is for large organizations that communicate via multiple channels. They have teams that are large enough to require things like scheduling, management, workforce optimization. Um, there's the outreach capabilities via dynamic not notification. This is a this is a package that can be uh, custom, completely customized to whatever their needs are. That that that's how it was built. It was built to be completely customized to whatever the needs are. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Reza. Reza has a nice way of bringing all this into one uh, into one final closing statement in terms of talking about the integrated communication experience um, based on all the things offered by Intermedia. They were pretty much a one-stop shop for all business, uh, communications, collaboration, and productivity needs. Reza, over to you. Thank you, thank you, Joe, and, and thank you so much for, for all the wonderful insight here. And so this closing slide that I wanted to talk to you about is really about essentially looking at the, the, the overall experience from integrated communication. So the reality is that looking at cloud communications, it's, it's more than just UCAS, it's more than just CCAS. It, it is going to be an integrated experience. So, you know, my roots, I'm, I'm a born bred Canadian. So in, in the spirit of stereotypes, I'm going to give a, a hockey analogy, sorry, but I just have to be done. But communications at the end of the day, is in reality the defense of the team, right? It needs to work. It's important. Um, but really, what that really means is that when it's broken, people complain about it. But as long as it's working, it's fine. The reality is, is that how the dynamics are changing is that it's more than that. It's, it's about the experience of the user. It's about experience of the group or the experience of the department and how well this works with the business goals of the department the business processes of that particular department in order to provide the differentiation. So you'll see here that, you know, common services are the foundation to connect an organization across any of these different types of worker groups, right? But what's unique is that um, add to this the unique elements of the different users, you know, and then these different users incorporate different aspects of things, whether it be simple phone capabilities, right, to collaboration capabilities and, and you know, the, the mobile integrations and, and, sorry, the mobile services or mobile, mo mobile and desktop services to different types of third-party integrations, right, to start moving into the contact center pieces uh, that, that essentially allow the organization to continue to extend. Now, here, here's the key aspect that I wanted to, to, to point out is that the common services that you see here are all consistent across any of the different user groups. So what does that really mean? That really means is that it gives you the ability for an organization to take their capabilities, commonalities exist, and move from good to great. And the partners, and, and it's our ability basically to showcase what these dynamics look like within an organization. Because at the end of the day, not every organization is gonna be built the same way. However, these experiences that come up and how they work is really how the stickiness comes into play and how you know, we can showcase this. So this vision that we have really includes the full suite of capabilities for cloud communication. Your UCAS services, your collaboration capabilities, and your contact center, and now Intermedia has it all. So look, at the end of the day, you know, moving to this next slide, I, I just wanna reiterate this fact that the reality is, is that We've said this before, This is there's a great opportunity for our partners. And we know that, look, at the end of the day, all this stuff may not be here. Everything that we want it to be, the way we want it to be, is not gonna be here overnight. But, you, but I wanna reiterate the fact that Intermedia has always been a partner-first organization. 
And our intention here is all the great services that we have been delivering for Unite in terms of capabilities of enabling our partners through whether it be a reseller model, an advisor model, support services, marketing resources, onboarding experience, billing and taxing, technical support. We will have this for our contact center. Everything is already moving into play in order to enable this so that we can provide the consistency. So I just wanna reiterate the fact that, that you can go out there with confidence knowing that we have your back and we're gonna support you to make sure that we deliver the most optimal experience that we can across all of our services for our partners. So I'm going to just finish this point off here for October 24th. We will have the second set of webinar, uh, the second set of part two of this webinar um, that is going to take a deeper look into the Intermedia Unite Contact Center offering. We're going to take a much more detailed look at, uh, at Contact Center offering, pricing, packaging, promotioning, and, and positioning here. We're going to walk through the product and some of the capabilities for a customer. So this is something that uh, I would not miss. And we will actually be sending out a link to the partners that have joined today so that you can actually register for this. But this will be a great webinar. Myself and Joe will be back to talk through a lot more details uh, associated with uh, the Intermediate Contact Center solution. And that's it. So we will stop it here. I'm gonna hand it back to Jason to, to walk through some of the questions. I think we have a, a number of questions that have come up. And uh, so Jason, please take it away. Yeah, we do. We have a lot of questions. The very first one is, when can we start selling this? Right. Uh, and so I'll I'll take a stab at that one. Um, so this will be available as of October 24th. Uh, October, uh, sorry, the end of October. October 25th is our launch date that we're looking at right now to, to have these services ready for you out of the box. Um, and the, these would be the, the, the entire integrated service play that we've talked about today. However, if there are opportunities today that are coming up that, that need contact center, we, we, can, we can help today. So it's not necessarily something that has to wait to there. Obviously, these packages are being launched, but we can actually integrate and, and have some of those discussions today uh, to, to at least start the conversation. So feel free to reach out to your channel manager and, uh, and and have them uh, integrate and, and, and talk to them what specifically you'd like to see. And we'll, we'll start helping today. Sure. And Herb would like to know, uh, just a reminder of what size customer support contact center is this targeting? So Joe, I'll let you answer this one. I'll actually bring, uh, bring my... Uh... My good friend Andrew, and to start feeling some of these questions here. So, size of customer support contacts, or is this this is targeting? So, we have three different packages. Um, so, of course, there's three different uh, three different target customers. But at the low end, uh, it could be as probably as low as three to five. And on the high end, we've we've serviced it as high as in the in, in the thousand plus range. Andrew, anything else to to throw on? No, top that's of that? correct. There's no, there's really no, there's no limit, minimum or maximum in terms of what the software can support. But I think our sweet spot um, is anywhere from, you know, five to a thousand seats. <laughs> no, I'd say five to, you know, anywhere from five to a hundred seats, right? I mean, um, and, and really the underserved markets are kind of our sweet spot, but there's no limits. So in, in terms of who can, who can take advantage of this, we have customers with one seat. All right. Thanks, Andrew. Herb also like to know if there's fail or failover options. Andrew, can you take that one? Sure. That's a bit of a loaded question. I'm going to say yes uh, at a high level. The software itself, and when you guys show up to the demo um, for the for the part two, you'll see it's actually device agnostic and phone system agnostic, and so that in itself uh, allows for some failover options. And and so it's a bit of a it's a bit of a loaded uh, question. And since the next one is already there, yes, there is a live listening, live monitor, whisper, barge in, as well as a uh, a full uh, evaluation module from a post interaction perspective. So recorded calls can be evaluated. All right. How is this different from auto attendant with hunt groups? So we route calls to a, to an agent, to a person. We know um, within a millisecond when a call comes in, which agents are available and who we're going to send the call to based on a skill-based um, routing algorithm that we, you know, we, we apply. So rather than you know, ringing everybody's phone or ringing a bunch of phones in succession, we send the call to the actual person that's available. 
the customer experience is better. We get the call delivered directly to an actual person, um, and we have a named agent there so that we can run reports against that. And you know, it's it's all about putting your best agent forth, you know, on the first try, and you know, and having these sort of first call resolutions with auto attendants and hunt groups. You really don't have that visibility. Who answered the call? Um, you know, and, and you don't have the ability to send a particular call to a particular person based on skill. All right. And, and let me help. just kind of just jump jump in on that one too. Um, I think the important thing for everyone to understand is with our three packages, you're going to be able to deliver contact center functionality at different levels of sophistication for different buyers. So if you have a buyer that just needs auto attendant and, and hunt groups, but maybe they want some better reporting, maybe they want some better management functions like being able to listen in on calls and, and, um, or barge in, great, that's our low end you know, express package. If you need skills-based routing where you have some people that speak a different, you know, have different certifications or different language capabilities, that's great. Move, move that customer opportunity to one of our higher-end packages. If you have um, customers that aren't just voice-focused, right, well, we need to be able to take email. We need to be able to take web chat. We want our, our customers to be able to text all and call. All of these, we call them channels, all of these different channels into our contact center group and then distribute all that stuff. We do that too, right? So it, it, what, what we're going to teach you guys over time is the differences between the different packages where, and where they really just fit. It, it doesn't even, it, it, it's not necessarily even the size of the customer. It, you could have a very large you know, group of people that need very little sophistication. You could have a small group of people that need a lot of sophisticated and a lot of channels. We're going to give you the packages at the at the pricing to meet those needs. Thanks, Mark. How about uh, Andrew? How about the bandwidth overhead per call center user? Yeah, the the application layer on the um, on the, the 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 two top tiers of service are separate from the phone. So there's a there's a, going to be your your phone call client, and there's going to be a soft client for the actual application. It does not use uh, hardly any bandwidth. Um, it's a it uses less than a VoIP call in terms of um, you know the application layer. It just pings the server um, for uh, status updates, right? From an availability perspective. Great. Well, what type of reports are available? Uh, for me as well, that so we have, yep. um, I think between four and five thousand reports in the library. Um, we offer, and they're all available as canned reports to clients. So part of what we normally do is just work with the end client on the on the onboarding side and just unlock the reports that the customer needs. So uh, anything from uh, queue level, um, agent level, uh, all of your post call wrap up reports, surveys, and as well as uh, custom reporting is available inside the platform as well. All right. Andrew, if a manager needs to listen in on calls for coaching, does every employee need a contact center package? That's a great question. It's almost like somebody planted it. Um, so actually, one <laughs> of the differentiators, yeah, it's true though, right? One of the differentiators with our software is that uh, a manager, uh, a supervisor, an administrator actually doesn't need or consume a license to do things like coaching or listening to recorded calls or accessing reports or real-time monitoring. Um, our packages are built, at least the top two tiers are built on uh, concurrent agents. So the number of agents that actually log in to take calls simultaneously, no license is required for user access into the admin portals. But, but right. if, if, uh, if a manager wants to listen in on someone's call and, uh, and barge in or whisper to them, that user needs to have uh, uh, be an agent in the quote contact center. Great, Mark, can you address NFR pricing? Yeah, we, we don't have it exactly set yet, um, but expect it will be aggressively low um, in order, we, we, we want our partners using Unite, we want our partners using our contact center solutions in whatever package um, makes sense for you so you can better support your customers. So um, uh, we'll, we'll, more to come on that. But you know, generally, what we do is we take our lowest um, uh, uh, tiered price and then give you a discount on top of that. That's that that makes it very very attractive, and that will always be our goal. We we want you all using this. 
And I just want to address a, a question that's in, the, it's in the chat that I'm sure some can't see. So it's from Truck, and I'm not sure if I understand this exactly. Um, it's written, is this a true call center solution? Will this allow our call center to take calls for our clients and act as their call center service? So it, it's, it's up to you what services that you want to provide your customers, but this is a um, this is contact center software at the that that can be configured at the highest level of capability. So um, competitors would be like in contact five nine, right? Our the the solution that we're going to be able to provide to you will stack up feature for feature um, with the the top of the line you know solutions in the industry um, for the biggest and largest deployment. So. So what we're providing you that you can either you, you can use in your own business absolutely you, you you'll want to use this in your business so when your when your customers call you you can better support them but you also be able to sell this of course to your customers who have their own contact centers because they've got customers calling them so I just want to make sure everyone's super clear on that. All right, Mark, can you also answer if the product support is by intermedia or by the agent or partner? Yeah, um, similar to how we do everything else. Um, if you're a private label uh, reseller, then um, you do the billing, you do the support, and we support you just like we do with Unite, with you know taxes and billing and 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 partner concierge desk and helping you every step of the way. And look, this stuff is is more complicated than um, than uh, a Unite uh, or Elevate sale, um, but we're committed to to teaching you helping you along the way, whatever we need to do to make sure you're successful. If you are an agent uh, or an advisor, nothing changes there either. Um, you'll sell it just the same way that you sell um, Unite, um, where you, you do the sale and you get a commission and we take care of the customer and we help you also along the way. So, so just think of it as just business as usual um, from a uh, uh, the way we've organized it with a new capability that you can go out and sell that, um, that we know your customers are looking for. All right, Andrew, can we schedule a remote demo of product of the product when we're in front of a decision-making C-level exec? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's what we do. Um, so I, I highly recommend just, just uh, book it through your intermedia account rep and they'll pull in the appropriate resources for the demo. Awesome. Thank you. Um, we have a lot more questions here, and we're going to run out of time, so we're going to take one more. Is there a white label option, Mark? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, like I mentioned, um, private label, fully supported, just like we do with, you know, Elevate. Um, you can even put your brand on it, uh, which is a little different than Elevate. You don't really put your brand on that. So, yes, absolutely. You'll in the private label, you you bill for it. Uh, it's your brand, um, and we, we support you. And Jason, let's just keep going. If people want to hang and get some questions answered, let's let's just keep going. Okay. We'll talk fast. Um, no problem. Somebody wanted to know when the next webinar is again. When is that going to be? Well, I, I think that what they're asking here, Jason, is will there be an actual demo of the product? Absolutely. Um, we will We will be demoing the product live for you then. Um, look, and, and if you if you've got a deal, if you're if you're working or you need you know you need to know more right now, reach out to your partner manager and um, we'll we'll get you one sooner than later. Um, you know the kind of the official launch is is end of um, October. Uh, that's when the Express software is available. Um, but if you want to see some early stuff, we'll, we're happy to show you. All right. Well, but. Customer already has Unite with us. Is it integrated with Contact Center? Yeah. So Mark? if you if, if a customer already has Unite, um, then uh, and and um, their and the Contact Center Express package is right for them. It's just going to be a, a couple clicks to enable it. Uh, it'll be really easy. If they're a more sophisticated customer and they need something that will be in our um, our Pro or our Elite package, then we basically kind of just add it on the top. Um, you, you always need something for the, the telephone call and, and whether they're using Unite to receive the call or an existing phone system they already have, we can actually layer on our two upper level contact center packages on top of either one. 
Great. How about spiffs and revenue? Does it follow previous intermedia models, Mark? Well, I think you're, yes. I mean, well, so um, from an advisor perspective, yes, it will align. And then from a, a partner uh, buy price perspective, expect similar or potentially even better margins than you're doing now with actually much higher uh, monthly recurring. So um, there's great opportunity here in, in contact center to make a, a lot more money. Hey, Andrew, regarding CRM integration, is there a list of supported platforms that will be supported? Yeah, I mean, it's a short list today out of the box, Dynamics, Salesforce, and Zendesk. But we are very open to custom integrations with third-party applications as long as we can, you know, tap into an API. We can't create anything out of, mid -air, out of thin air, but we've integrated with all kinds of crazy homegrown <laughs> CRM applications for the same sort of outcome. All right. I've got a question here about what about those who are using an after hours answering service auto attendant currently? Is the call center available 24 seven? Let, let me take this one because I think what this shows is just a little bit of confusion. Um, uh -huh. What we're talking about here is cloud-based software that helps a company run and manage their call center. This is not people. This is not hired people to answer the phone and say, hi, you've reached so-and-so company. That's, um, that's not what this is. So, so um, this is the, the, the question is a little non sequitur in, in that. So yeah. there is no such thing as is call center available 24-7. It's we are providing software that, um, that companies use to manage and run their call center and distribute calls and emails and texts to the right people. Um, but happy to you know answer more detailed questions. Um, you know, just reach out to your your partner manager. We can get you all kind of literature to read up in this space. All right, Andrew, can we overlay and install on a worldwide six thousand person firm that uses the via VoIP hardware? Absolutely, um, and we can deliver those calls either to attend digit DID or if the Avaya hardware has you know is SIP enabled, we can deliver it over SIP trunk. Um, the one challenge there is if it's international. I think we're limited to North America at this time, right? So, getting if there's agents sitting you know internationally, it's a it's a little bit more of a challenge, but um, certainly not something we couldn't overcome. And I'd like to say that um, a large chunk of our deployments are over the top of existing, you know, PBX, um, you know, hardware like Cisco's, Avaya's, Mitel, Shortel's. We find that that's a that's a fairly big part of our uh, our, our sales. All right, Mark, do we have any plans for expansion beyond North America? Yeah, it's absolutely something that we're looking at for for next year. It's it's the top uh, one of the top things that we get requested from our partners. And it's something that we're looking at for, for next year. All right. Mark, how compatible will this be with Elevate white label systems? Yeah, 100% compatible. Um, if you, as I mentioned earlier, um, if you uh, are selling Elevate to your customers and, you know, after we launch on, you know, at the end of the month uh, and you want to just enable the, the Contact Center Express, you'll just go into the control panel and turn it on. Um, and that's pretty simple. Uh, as I mentioned, if you are interested in one of the other two packages, um, we can also enable it. It's, it's not as easy as like a click a button. Um, over time, it will be. Um, uh, over over time and, and, and next year is our goal to make it as easy as just you know hitting a button. But if but so there's three packages: Express, Pro, um, and Elite. And um, if if it is the, the the Express package meets the needs of your customers, then it really is just a click of a button to enable it. All right. Is there pricing yet for those three levels? We haven't. Nope. We haven't gotten to the pricing yet. Um, but we'll absolutely make sure you understand the pricing um, uh, when uh, <laughs> we launch, of course, uh, at the end of the month or end of October. Um, but just kind of directionally, um, you can expect uh, the Express to be, you know, sub twenty-five dollar you know, retail um, add-on. And uh, the other two packages, um, you know, I don't want to freak people out, but we've seen, you know, competitive pricing $175 per seat for the, um, like, elite level uh, that we have. We won't even be near there. We're going to give you an opportunity to come in with great pricing and, and make great margins and be very, very, very competitive uh, in the market. Great. 
Hey, Andrew, does this require Intermedia IP trunks to light up an existing switch? Um, it doesn't, although we prefer it that way, right? Because delivering the calls over you know, a piece of network that we control is better than delivering it over the PSTN to a 10-digit DID. So we're either going to deliver it on net through IP trunks or over the top on, on the PSTN. Those are kind of your choices. Um, but it'll work either way. So I guess the answer is no, it doesn't require it, but obviously that's the preferred method. Yeah, I've right. got one that, that's in the um, it's in the chat, not the the Q and A. Um, um, does your software allow our call center uh, to manage multiple clients in an outsourced call center service? So can it identify? You know, so so you've got a you are a call center provider. Um, you've got multiple people renting your people. Um, we can identify um, which call coming in for which you know user base, right, Andrew? Yes. Um, so the and, and I've been chatting with Truck on the side as well. And and so okay. you know we have many BPOs using our software for that same uh, sort of use case. I think the one I like to to use as a reference a lot is we have a we have actually an answering service for real estate agents. Um, it's Canadian based, but um, they have over 200 real estate agents. So they have individual you know specific queues for all 200 of those clients, and they all get their own queue treatment. They have their own level of reports. They have their own inbound outbound DIDs, etc. So uh, to answer the question, absolutely, this is this is what a lot of folks use the software for. All right, we made truck happy. Yes, thankfully. <laughs> um, Andrew, if a mid-level package wants chat, do they have to upgrade to lead or can it be a la carte? Actually, we do have a la carte, so that's a great, uh, that's a great question. And I know when the packages are released, you'll be able to see them. Um, they have the ability to, to, to consume everything with Elite or consume the middle package and then just the odd feature here and there until it's you know, worth the, the full upgrade. So chat, I believe, dynamic notifications, email, SMS, those are channels that can be added a la carte. Yeah, the mid-level mid package will come with voice. And as Andrew said, yeah, if, so if your voice plus chat, great. Um, you'll a la carte the chat only, uh, save you some money, save your customers some money, and away you go. Uh, we, we've seen this where a lot of our competitors, what they'll do is say, well, if you want anything more than just voice, boom. Now you're in the super expensive ultra deluxe package. Um, we've, we said, well, I think we think there's a better way. You know, if, if what you need is in the mid-level package, except for you just need one extra channel, great. We'll, we'll, we'll just get you that. Mark, does Intermedia offer nonprofit company pricing? I, I know that we've we've absolutely you know gone to bat for our partners to win nonprofit deals. So just uh, I don't think we don't have anything that's like in our price sheet for nonprofit. But let us know what deal you have, and we'll we'll do what we have to do to support you. Alrighty, and the last one is just a little. Kudos from Darren saying, way to go to be very competitive with Ring Central. Thanks, Darren. Yeah, we're Appreciate we're really that. excited to be able to offer this to our partners. Uh, and I think what's really cool is, you know, it's 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 one third fully integrated and will be two thirds really, really integrated, you know, shortly. So so when when Reza talked about that kind of common communication platform where you can now go to a business and say, hey, look. We're going to help all your people, regardless of what they do, communicate with each other really well through, you know, they can call each other, they can IM with each other, they can, they can um, you know, they can video with each other. And then if you've got people that need, you know, collaboration, well, we've got great Unite features. If you've got informal contact center, we've got some low end, but also inexpensive, you know, call and contact center features. If you need the full blown thing, we got that too. So we're really excited to be able to, to offer that to you to, to take to your customers. All righty. Well, we're kind of running out of time here. So uh, I am going to just let everybody know that uh, you can get a copy of this recorded webinar uh, either two ways. One is that you can go into the sales partner portal later on today after we get this um, uh, we get this all together and get it uploaded. You can find it there and you can go through it again and send it off to a friend. You'll also see uh, some follow-up emails for everybody who's on the call today that will direct you to um, a link to uh, be able to go get that. And that's all we have for today. I want to thank Reza. I want to thank Joe and Andrew and Mark all for answering questions today and Lilia for being on the call today too. 
And uh, we really appreciate all of you uh, joining us and um, kicking off this product with Intermedia. Thanks so much for joining. And uh, we'll see you in October for part two of this uh, and reach out to your Thank reach out to your you know channel manager um, if you've got questions you've got deals right now they'll put you in touch with people that can get you smart and help you out um, so feel don't you you know we're we're officially launching October we wanted to give you all a sneak peek get you get you know what's going on so don't be afraid you know reach out uh, and we'll we'll get you whatever information you need um, sooner than that okay. Thanks all. We'll talk to you soon. See you next time.